I'm Kafetan Bash. Hello, everybody. My name is Tavon Cook, and I'm the Deputy Public Affairs Officer here at the U.S. Consulate General in Erbil. I would like to thank you for taking time today to join us for our Education USA chat series, How to Study in the United States, The Five Steps. Today I'm going to talk about the first step, which is researching your options for study in the United States. Please be sure to join us in the future for other topics such as the application process, financial aid, the student visa, and how to prepare yourself culturally and in other ways before traveling to the United States. Before we start, I want to take some time to talk about what Education USA is. Education USA is a U.S. Department of State funded network of education centers and advisors that aim to provide comprehensive and accurate information to students and education institutions abroad to prepare them for study in the United States. It is the official State Department's source of information on education. Here at the Consulate General in Erbil, we have a dedicated education advisor who works on education issues. So he spends every Thursday at the University of Duhok where he talks to university students and university administrators on how to prepare for study in the United States. He also spends every other Monday at our American Corner in Sulaymaniyah. You may have also seen me come out to different high schools and universities in the Iraqi Kurdistan region to talk about study opportunities in the United States. If you would like for us to come to your university, perhaps in the comments you can write your university and we can arrange a time to come out and talk to the students and officials about different ways and different ways to prepare for study in the United States. So why study in the United States? Let me give you four good reasons. The first is quality. The United States is known for having very high quality colleges and universities with wide, wide name recognition around the world. One of the things that sets U.S. institutions apart is that we focus on what is called a liberal arts and sciences curriculum that allows the students to get a very broad education in a number of areas in addition to their area of specialty. So say you wanted to study electrical engineering, which is very possible in the United States, but you also had an interest in art or a foreign language. You can do all of that while you're studying in the United States. The second, op the second reason is value. If you look at the cost of education in the United States, you may be initially scared because it looks high, but the United States actually is good value compared to many other institutions in the world. And as you'll note in a future segment, when we talk about financial aid, there are ways to lower that price tag if you don't have the financial resources so that you can study in the United States. Flexibility is another reason that you should study in the States. Like I mentioned, you may be that engineer or that scientist who would like to take extracurricular activities, participate in sports programs. That's also possible in U.S. institutions. And finally, the choice. We have thousands of colleges and universities in the United States, and you can pick according to what your priorities are. For instance, we have universities, both public, state institutions, and private universities through endowment that offer a wide range of specialties from engineering to information technology, to computer science, to chemistry, to physics, to creative writing, any discipline you can imagine at all levels of study. You can get a bachelor's degree, which is about four years of study in the United States, or a master's degree ranging from one to three years, or a doctoral degree from three years on. Those are um, some of the options. If you, for instance, are interested in religious institutions or technical institutions, we also have those in the United States. Another type of institution that many international students don't know about is the community college. And community colleges are two-year institutions that lead to an associate's degree. Those institutions are leaders in the vocational field, in the technical field, and very often they have very strong connections to employers in the areas that they operate. So say you are in the middle of one state and that state has a need for nurses, then you would study community, you would study nursing at the community college, which would prepare you for the job market in the place that you're studying. Community colleges are also a great option for university, uh, for students rather, who don't have the financial resources to pay for a four-year program of study. Community colleges cost much less and are much more cost-effective. 
So you would enroll in the community college, complete two years of study, and then since community colleges have transfer agreements with four-year universities, you would transfer those credits over to the four-year program without losing your progress in order to finish for your degree. Community colleges are also a good option for non-traditional students, as we call them in the United States. Students who may be a little bit older than traditional college age or who may have other factors that prevented them from starting university studies on time. So that may be an option for them too. I do see we have one question um, and it's about standardized tests. And Marewan I mean, asks if there's any possibility to waive the GRE for PhD study in the United States, especially if the person already has a master's degree. That's actually a great question. Um, we're going to talk about that process more in our next segment on the application process. It may be possible, in, but just to answer the question for this segment, it may be possible in some universities, but that's very university specific. Moving on, when looking at the different colleges and universities in the United States, you have to ask yourself, what are your priorities? What is important to you? The first question is, why do you want to study in the United States? Uh, in many cases, the United States has a program that may not be offered in your home country, may not be offered here. And so it allows you the opportunity to go and study in that area of expertise that you like and then bring it back here. Just over the past week, I met with two students who are going to the United States to study creative writing. And they noted that such programs are very hard to, very hard to find here in the region. And so they hope to get a very comprehensive program of study so that they can bring it back and introduce it, for the, uh, introduce it to the people here. So in looking, you ask yourself, what type of program fits your needs? Are you interested in studying in a city or a rural area, a place that's close to the mountains, close to water? All of those options are possible in the United States. It just depends on what's important to you. Are you interested in particular sports, football, rugby, basketball, swimming, chess? We have all of those in the United States as well. You would research universities that will have those types of activities in addition to your desired course of study because you want to be a well-rounded student and you also want to have opportunities outside of the classroom that you can focus your energy on. We have another question from uh, Mr. Hussein. If we study a PhD in the United States, uh, how will we get visas? So you'll tune in to a future segment which we'll talk about the student visas. Thank you, Hussein, for your question. So do tune in in the future to get more information about the student visa process. And then we have another question from Wazir Ahmad about the IELTS. So the IELTS is um, an English language test similar to the TOEFL. And Wazir is, is asking, is that test required? We'll talk about that in our next segment, but to answer the question now, it really depends on the school. And this is why you'll begin researching the schools to see what their individual requirements are. Different colleges and universities have different types of requirements for the students that are applying. And there's no one universal set of um, requirements for a university or college in the United States. Think about your field of study. This is the area that you're going to spend your next four to six years on in the United States. So you want to make sure that the area that you want to study is something you really want to study. And you want to make sure that the college and university has a good program that fits it. I know sometimes people get caught up by name recognition. This university is on the top of this ranking list or this university is very well known. But at the end of the day, the program and the university needs to fit your specific situation. We have a question from Jir. What is the average cost of living and studying in a city, middle class college and city in the United States? It depends, and this is actually what I was just talking about now. So defining your priorities, figuring out what's important to you. Do you wanna live in a rural area or do you wanna live in a city? If you want to live in a city, you research colleges that are located in cities, cities that you may be interested in, and then you research the different types of, um, the different prices, the different costs of living, so that you can begin building that into your budget. That's actually something we'll talk about in the future segment when we talk about financial aid and how to plan for it. So, you may be wondering, 
where do you begin searching for these colleges and universities? The first step is Education USA. So Education USA actually has a dedicated website, educationusa.state.gov. There you'll find different types of advice on how to go about researching programs, as well as search portals that will allow you to begin your search. There are other search engines that you can um, utilize. We don't in endorse them, but they're pretty well known, such as the Princeton Review or Times in Higher Education, the Grad School Cafe, US News. Each of these portals have information on universities, colleges, majors, and other specialties that you should be aware of. They will also rank the lists. I'll say don't focus so much on rankings because there is no official university ranking system in the United States but focus more on the program and, and, and its fit for you. So we have another question from Lana. I am a mother of three. Am I qualified for study in the United States? Well, Lana, that's a very good question. Your being a mother has nothing to do with your ability to study. So that's not a criteria for being able to study in the United States. You should be academically prepared and academically qualified to study in the United States. So if you have strong academic credentials, you can use that to research universities that fit what you want to study in the United States. We have another question from Eileen. I want to get a scholarship to study a Master's of Science in the United States or affordable study. What's the first step to take? Well, the first step was tuning into this Facebook Live chat so that you can get the information that you need to begin narrowing down the course of study that you wish to take. So the first step is to figure out what you want to study and then start asking yourself what priorities are important to you so that you can narrow down institutions. In case you are trying to figure out how to set your priorities, if you go to educationusa.state.gov, we actually have a handy handout. How's that for wordplay? A useful handout that will allow you to list your priorities. I'll show you a, a, a brief version of it here. And it will help you figure out some of the things that you should be thinking about as you're looking at study in the United States. So Mr. Abdullah has a question. What is the age for studying? So the United States, we are looking at, do you have the academic credentials to study in a US college or university? We have students who are very young. We have students who are a bit older. Basically, you need to finish secondary school, so the equivalent of a high school education, in order to be admitted to most universities. So Larsa asks us, can you tell us about the pharmacy postgraduate programs? It's a great question. Thank you for asking. So utilizing the advice I just gave you on the search portals, uh, Wall Street Journal, US News, Princeton Review, educationusa.state.gov, you can go there and indicate that you're interested in studying pharmacy in the United States. And it will give you a list of um, schools that offer that degree as well as pre-professional programs which will lead into the program. So pharmacy in the United States, unlike institutions abroad, is not a first level degree. So what you'll find is that universities will all uh, have some sort of transfer agreement where you get a liberal arts education and then transfer into pharmacy programs. But start with the search engines that I just recommended, and you can get an idea of the pharmacy programs in the United States. So we have another question. Um, is there support for students to obtain information on higher education? It's a good question. Yes, there is. Here at the consulate, for one, I mentioned at the beginning of today's segment that we have a dedicated education advisor, as well as myself, and we both go out to high schools and universities in the region, private institutions, and we even hold sessions at our American Corners here in Erbil, Duhok, and Suleimania. So you can come to any of those sessions or talk to us and we'll help you as you start your search. We have another question from Mr. Haval. Can you work while you study in America? That's actually a good question. Um, let me just be frank with you. When you're studying in the United States, you're studying on a student visa. And so your first goal should be study and not work. Um, in limited circumstances, very limited, you can work with your university to seek some sort of part-time employment traditionally related to what your course of study is in the United States. But for instance, say you wanted to study engineering but get a full-time job so you can make money on the side, that's not the purpose of a student visa. We have another question. 
from Goran. Uh, I was in the 11th grade. What can I do to start over? I'm 26 years old. So Goran, uh, are, are you, if I understand your comment are, are you, uh, or your question, are you indicating that you're a bit older now and perhaps you didn't finish your secondary studies? Um, if, if that's the case, then you may want to seek out ways to finish your secondary studies here and then look at higher education options in the United States. For a person like you, community colleges would be a better fit, kind of like for the reasons I mentioned, non-traditional students, students who may not have the grades, the high enough grades to enter higher education for your institutions, or older students. Community colleges are a great way to get started in the United States before transferring on. We have another question from Hamid. What are highly ranked universities for studying PhDs in landscape architecture in the United States? Very well thought out question, Hamid. Um, as I just said, the United States has no official college ranking. And especially for graduate study, one thing you want to keep in mind is that it's very discipline oriented. So if you're looking at landscape architecture, you're going to have to look at the individual colleges and universities that offer the program, look at the professors that are doing research in areas that you're interested in, and look at their publication rates. And then you'll choose a university based off of that. Another question. What about nursing? Nursing is, is, a, is a pretty popular profession in the United States. You can study nursing from every level between the associate's degree and the PhD, the doctoral degree. So if you want to become basically credentialed as a, a licensed professional nurse or a registered nurse, you can start at the community college level. Universities will have bachelors of nursing, masters of nursing, which will allow you to become nurse practitioners, for instance. So those opportunities are available in the United States. We have another question. What are the requirements to get accepted in the United States? Is there any scholarship for the PhD? Well, you'll tune in then for our segment on financial aid where we'll dive much more deeply into financial aid, money, and other considerations for higher education study. So we have another question. What is the best university in the United States? It's a very broad question. As I said before, there is no official university ranking. You find the university that's the best for your personal situation, your personal priorities, and your desired field of study. Another question. I'm an English teacher. Can I continue to study in the United States? Jordan asks. What's the first step I should do? Research your options. Start with the search engine portals I mentioned. Look, see what types of programs offer the field of study that you want. Reach out and make yourself well known. And actually, let me, let me take some time to talk about that in a little bit more detail. So as international students, when you're reaching out, when you're doing research um, on colleges and universities in the United States, once you find an institution that you think fits your needs very well, make yourself known. Reach out to the International Student Center in the university. Reach out to the department. Introduce yourself as an international student. Tell them very briefly about what you have to offer and let them know that you're interested in studying in their institution. One of the things the administrators could do is put you in contact with current students or recent alumni of the university who can give you an idea of what student life is like academically, on campus, outside of classes. They can talk to you about post-graduation opportunities and so on. So definitely think about making yourself known. We have another question from Ezra. What are the opportunities for a master's degree at the University of Maine? Oh, Esther, that's a great question. If, well, sounds like you want to go to the University of Maine, which means half your research is almost over. Uh, half your research is already over. So you can go directly to the University of Maine's web page, search for their academic programs, and see which one's a good fit for you. Great question. We have another question, uh, another question about student visas. So I'll just tell you to stay tuned for a future segment we will talk um, more about student visas. Another question from uh, Revoir. What about the Masters of Science in Petroleum Engineering in the United States? Good question. So utilize the search engines and search portals that I mentioned, US News, Wall Street Journal, educationusa.state.gov, to get a sense of the engineering programs in your desired field in the United States. Then you would go to their individual pages, make sure the curriculum is a good fit, 
and then introduce yourself to the university. From another uh, question, where to start applying to study in the United States? Is there any fee? Can people apply or not on, online? It's a great question. That's actually our next segment, which we'll talk about the application process. Do all universities have the same application requirements? We have another question. No, the universities have different application requirements. So it is important when you're doing your research to make sure you're aware of all the different requirements of the universities. Perhaps make a spreadsheet, list their application deadlines, the types of documentation, and everything that's required. And we'll go into much more detail about that in our next section, in our next segment about the application process. We have another um, question. How to study at the Air Force University? Air Force University just accepts American citizenship. Well, you have to meet the requirements of the university. If you don't meet the requirements of the university, then unfortunately you're not eligible to study there. But great question. If I go to the United States, Randy asks, how can I, make my, uh, how can I certify my architecture degree um, in order to study? Great question. Next segment in the application process, that's actually one of the points I'll talk about, which is important for international students, how to go about getting your international credentials evaluated and recognized so that you can study in the United States. We'll take about two more questions and then I'll give a wrap up for this session. So what about graduate students? Can they live in America and get a residence? I, I didn't quite understand your question, Hungar. Hunger, but you want to know about graduate students. So graduate students, un undergraduate students, if you're an international student, the process is the same. You get to know the people that um, run the programs that you're interested in, introduce yourself, apply, and then if you get into the university, you get the documents to get your student visa. Again, we'll talk about this in the future. And then you get the visa, which will allow you to reside and study in the United States. One more question. It looks like a mixture of immigration and casual travel. So um, for this session, we're talking about student visas. For tourist visas, I can direct you to our Consulate General's webpage, iq.usembassy.gov, where you can find a lot more information about tourist visas in Erbil. So last question on the topic from Sara. Now I'm studying in the, uh, in the university medical laboratory specialty, and when I complete it, I want to study for a master's in the United States. Can I do it? What should I do? You can do it. And what you should do is, in addition to uh, reviewing the lessons from this segment, tune in for our future segments. So we have researching the universities, completing the applications, uh, application pro um, process, and then going to study. So thank you for your questions. Let me wrap up. So this is part one of a multiple part series on the five steps to study in the United States. I gave a very brief overview about how to go on, uh, how to go about researching the opportunities for study in the United States. In the future, we'll talk more about the application process, financial aid, student visa, and then things you should prepare culturally uh, before going. We do have Education USA here at the U.S. Consulate, and we have a dedicated education advisor. If you're in Duhok, go to the University of Duhok on Thursdays. If you're in Suli, go to the American Corner in Suli every other Monday. If you're anywhere else, Duhok, Erbil, Suli, even Halabja, we cover Halabja, reach out to us and let us know if you would like us to cover, or to cover these in an individual session with your university, with your high schools, and we can make that happen. Thank you all for tuning in. Join us next time when we talk about the application process.